We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. More bad news for WBC champion Tyson Fury. His boar alibi has been affected by Martin Carefoot, the farmer. And your boy Ego looks into it deeper. And what I found out is a bit sketch. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Sign up for ESPN Plus below using my link. It does help the channel when you guys click on that link. Appreciate you guys. You can get ESPN Plus as a standalone app. They have college football you know sports are on a little bit of a um, sabbatical right now for obvious reasons going around the world but there's a ton of content documentaries you can catch up on things of that sort until like the ufc and boxing comes back and you know they have past fights you can also bundle espn plus with hulu and disney plus all three apps that i personally have all three you know i could show you my phone all three apps for one price of 12.99 you know, and it might help you during this, you know, crazy time, this quarantine time and whatnot. So let's get into it. Now, I'm not going to go over this entirely, but you guys see this came out five days ago, less than a week. The Lancashire pig farmer who could knock out Tyson Fury. He's a witness, age 70, sensationally withdraws evidence that helped to clear the world champion of drug cheating. So in this, this particular farmer Martin Carefoot was is he's saying that he lied and falsified documents, which ultimately led to Tyson Fury getting off. And after prolonged, you know, investigation, they decided to pull the plug and just give him a backdated sentence and not further potentially bankrupt UCAD by fighting a legal battle in court because he at least had an alibi. Now that alibi has been recanted by this man on the screen, Martin Careful. He says, you know what? They bribed, they, you know, someone said they needed a favor that was affiliated with the Team Fury. And then, you know, it just escalated from there. They needed a lot of my help. And it got to the point where I was having to cover for him and vouch for him so much with this lie that I felt bad for. It. But he said, you know, I did it and I got in too deep and I had to cover and vouch for him so long in this lie that they offered a monetary sum because they wanted to um, really beat this case because it would have been bad, not for the career just of Tyson Fury, but his cousin, Huey Fury, who both tested positive for an illegal banned substance, Nandrolone, right? So this man is claiming that he, as a farmer, sold wild boar meat and pheasant and stuff, but boar meat specifically, and that's what Tyson Fury says he ate and consumed and ingested, which created this Nandrolone failed drug test back in 2015. But now this shoots holes in his his alibi and, you know, in his justification for failing a drug test. If the person, your plug, who was allegedly plugging you is now, you know, went the other way, even though it happened years ago. So it's said that you can would look into the case and reinvestigate. I, I don't really hold much weight into that because UK you uh, has um, done a lot of sketch things, in my opinion, anyway, like with the whole Dillian White, how it all played out. Dillian White failed a drug test, but the fight still went on. Oscar Rivas didn't know of the failed test. The fans, you know, the media didn't know of the failed test. They had some secret hearing. And this is we're talking about anabolic steroids, Dianabol. You know, for Dillian White. And then they don't say nothing for several months. Everyone's like, oh man, what's happening with Dillian White? The WBC had to suspend his position. And then 
while this is going on, Eddie Hearn schedules him for a fight in Saudi Arabia. And then the night before they're about to fight, UCAD allegedly clears him. So it looks like there's some underhanded things going on that need to be investigated with them anyway. You know, like some payoffs and stuff. But back to Tyson Fury. Basically, the boar, wild boar, uncastrated wild boar meat is the defense he used to have this anabolic steroid. But now your alleged plug is now turning on you and saying, I never gave these motherfuckers nothing, you know. So whatever they had in their system didn't come from me. And that was part of the reason why, because there's a lot of people. This is the old media trick. There's a lot of people saying, oh, that's old stuff. Why are you bringing up old stuff? And they're saying, oh, he already served a ban for that. False. He served a, a suspension and a backdated ban, a.k.a. a settlement, because UCAD wasn't confident enough in their case or their ability to prove against something that maybe is plausible, right? With this guy writing statements, they didn't want to chance it because Tyson Fury's legal team was threatening UCAD, and from what I understand, they already have financial woes. So they they looked at the case files, they looked at the written statement from the farmer, so then they would have to prove without a shadow of a doubt that he ingested this and the pig farmer's lying, and at the time, the pig farmer, a 70-year-old white British guy who's been in the industry, was, was covering for him. You see what I'm saying? So... You could understand why UCAD kind of drops it because his alibi at the time was seemingly checked out. But now with him withdrawing and recanting and saying, you know what, I was lying. Perjury at its finest. That that draws a whole new, you know, chapter investigation. That means you tampered with evidence and you know, you bribe somebody to get off. So that's definitely dirty, you know. So we got to get to the bottom of it. But nonetheless, I don't look forward to UCAD doing the true investigation because it looks like underhanded things are are being done. I wish there was a jurisdiction above them, you know, like with what the FBI is for America that could look into all this stuff. You know, somebody who's like definitely neutral and not going to get paid off. You know, it's just like it's almost like death row days when the L.A. cops was working with death row records and getting paid off by bloods and and you know being affiliated with gang members and stuff it, it's kind of hard so so if that cop gives you a ticket it, you get a ticket but then death row they got guns and and weed and drugs and stuff in their car but they get off because they connected and clicked up and, and dirty you know what i'm saying so that don't make sense but without further ado that's the latest um, the pig farmer. I've talked about this. This is not going away. Uh, Frank Warren has come out and said it's rubbish. He rubbished it, but he really wasn't even handling Tyson Fury's career. So I really don't know how he would know what went on prior to him even being affiliated. Frank Warren was not the promoter. So how you know what happened before your time? And we have not heard anything from Tyson Fury. This is Tyson Fury. Wash your hands, you dossers not funny he blocked his comments so only people he follows and he only follows uh 15 people so only 15 people can leave a comment so he's posting pictures drinking beer guinness and um saying wash your hands and plugging this electrolyte hydration thing dressed up like batman right and he's in the same area like Lanc lancaster lancashire where this the farmer as you guys see, Lancashire farmer. So they, they're from the same area where the farmer has set up shop and where Tyson Fury is. So I made a video about that as well. So he hasn't, Tyson Fury ain't said nothing. So he's probably been advised to keep quiet. Let us handle it and let us, uh, I haven't even heard top rank say anything. But you know, nonetheless, these guys have an investment with Tyson Fury. So you know, they're not going to say, oh, he did it, he did it. You know, nor is UCAD necessarily based on um what i've seen from them they don't look the most trustworthy either it looks fishy like it looks like some fishy business with that too so we're conducting our own investigation and i want to show you what i found i told you young forensic files we have people on the case around the world that are looking at it 
from new medium and the thing the power of the internet and you're seeing it kind of with the coronavirus is obviously the coronavirus is a different beast but it's affecting these companies because people aren't spending money now people aren't spending money because they're afraid to go out they don't want to get contaminated they don't want to risk it you know supplies and stores are gutted but the point being is i'm getting emails from all types of companies begging for my service saying hey catch a flight it's only 30 bucks we'll eliminate fees and baggage fee because they're desperate because they're losing so much money they're desperate to have people travel you know i'm getting emails from chipotle during this time with the rona and they said oh we understand how it is and you know take a load off we'll deliver to you with postmates for free because they're taking such a massive hit now new media works the same way but this ain't no coronavirus, but we sick with it. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no coronavirus, but the same way, like I always tell you, the powers and the people, their strength in numbers. The companies, if they don't want to look into these matters that we are asking, we can speak. We can speak to it. I can make videos. Others are making videos. They have a petition against Tyson Fury, right? These types of things. And we're doing our own investigation. So... The bottom line is this, we control the narrative, new media, we, the powers in the people, these companies are going to get, they're going to get it and they're going to get it soon. So they don't have to investigate because we investigating and we have people everywhere looking into this, watching tape, rewatching the fights, looking at Tyson Fury's glove flop around. You have now fighters who are brave enough to speak out like Steve Cunningham, risk their reputation to give, you know, risk getting bad feedback to tell their honest opinion and i respect that so shout out to charles martin um steve cunningham dewey cooper and some more people so we're doing our own investigation and regarding the the wild boar i'm just like this is, i always said this was a weird alibi before this pig farmer came and recanted but look we doing our own research so tell me why i just typed on google the number one search engine in the world. So that's the whole entire world. Google is the number one search engine. You know, hold on. Let me take it back. What is the number one search engine? Google. So just so you guys know, I, new media, this is what I have to do. I have to cover every step. I typed in what is the number one search engine? And it says Google with over 70% of the searches market share. Google is undoubtedly the most popular search engine, right? Google captures almost 85% of mobile traffic. So YouTube is actually number two, just FYI. So you guys got to read and keep up with this. So I just typed in the number one search engine, which dominates that market space, right? And behind it is YouTube, which is owned by Google. So they probably have the same technology. And I said, wild boar extinct in the UK. You know, it says wild boar. You guys see this wild boar became extinct in the UK in the 17th century. There are thought to be 500 and 1000 animals in the UK. Currently, the biggest populations are in Kent, East Sussex and the Forest of Dean. With the others in Devon, Bedfordshire, Dorset and Scotland, right? So none of which is Lancaster where this pig farmer is at. And the pig farmer is telling you, I didn't do it. You know, I lied to help them. And then they didn't fulfill their end of the bargain. So the truth is coming out now. Right. And he said in this article that guess what? I never even really had wild boar like that. You know, I've never farmed wild boar. I just wrote these documents because I was helping a friend, you know, and they were going through it. I didn't know it was going to be this crazy. So this is this. this these are OK. So East Sussex. Let's see how bro. we do in real life. Look, this is Lane Lancaster. Lancashire. Number one search engine. So this is five hours and 20 minutes away. 305 miles away right so that's not even in that region 
Scotland. That's not close to Lancashire. Uh, let's say, let's type in Dorset to Lancashire. Four hours away. Four hours and 54 minutes. So these, both of these locations. So it says the locations, look, the, the locations where these are at are actually way down here. Not not near Lancashire. So that's two of them. You see? You see where we're going? So it says the biggest populations, like the places that have it, East Sussex and and um these other places. So I just typed in Dorset. Um I'll do one more. You know, I'm just I'm just picking random ones. You guys could do this on your own too. You know, you don't need new media to spell it out for you look almost 300 miles again four hours and 42 minutes so all these places are like five hours away from um from where this pig farmer is at see we doing our own investigation look scotland tell them that scotland is free Four hours and 22. So most of the population of wild boars, since they were extinct in the 17th century, right? It says they're about 500 into 1,000. So again, I already said that this was kind of a weird, a weird alibi to have used. You ate wild boar, uncastrated male wild boar, right? Now we learn through ego investigations and our resources. As shout out to my man who who sent me this and got me on the lead, right? And now we find out that the animal's pretty rare and pretty scarce in the UK. And it's saying the most popular regions that even have wild boar particularly, right? The regions that have wild boar particularly. Shout out to Ron, Ron Mill. He the one that hit, hit me to start looking into this direction, right? So the predominant locations, look, I, I checked mo like almost all of these. The predominant locations that I've just checked are ways away from Lanc Lancashire, right? I already typed East Sussex, five hours and 20 minutes. See, that's what I'm saying. Um, let's type in this last one. I think this is the only one I didn't check. Let me see how long, how far this is. See, we doing our own investigation. Okay, and that's the closest, but it's still three hours and 23, three hours, look, three hours and 43 minutes away. It's still 175 miles away. You see what I'm saying? So all these places that I've looked at that this UK article and Google search is pulling up that is saying are, are the areas that have this rare beast, this scarce animal that is more of a commodity and more extinct and went extinct and you know it basically just started to resurface that's why they only have a 500 bro it says they have 500 to 1000 so between martin carefoot saying i lied between martin carefoot saying you know what they offered me money never paid me i feel guilty the truth must come out between martin carefoot saying hey guys i never even had wild boar so that's how you know i was lying but I just did it to cover for them. But since they didn't do their end of the bargain, then it is what it is. Look, he said he lied and said, I supply one fully butchered wild boar pig to Team Fury generally every six, three to six weeks. So the basically the point I'm making is, yeah, you can you can truck things over and things can be delivered and, and things like that. 175 miles to 300 miles. Yeah, it's a possibility. But between the the rarity and the scarcity of this animal and between martin carefoot saying i lied right and between these <laughs> these um articles it says when did wild boars become extinct wild boar were numerous and widespread through british isles back in the roman saxon and medieval times but then became sometime extinct before the 17th century most sources say they became extinct at least in england <laughs> bro look at this we do it our own research forensic files most sources say they became extinct at least in england 
in the 13th or 14th century, right? It said, though I'm not convinced. So it says by the 17th century, you know, it, it was a problem. So how is it that you can't, can't look at this data before? Like, I'm, I'm talking about in 2015. Look, this is old Timon and Pumba looking ass, bro. Boars are omnivores and will eat a wide range of plant and animal matter. See, and the other thing is he failed for an anabolic steroid that the body produces. So they these are they're eating they're omnivores. So they're eating plants and small mammals, invertebrates and earthworms and stuff. So how do they have this larger than life level of, of nandrolone in their system? But beyond that, back to the, the main point I'm making in this video, it says there are thought to be between 500 and 1,000 animals in the UK. The UK population is, let's look at the UK population. So almost 66, 66 and a half, 67 million, and they got 500 to 1,000 estimated of this wild boar running around in modern times. So that's pretty low. That's pretty low. If you have almost 70 million population of humans, but again, this article is saying there are thought and the estimate is 500 to 1,000 animals. So all this stuff looks suspect. I don't care what nobody says. We run in our own investigation. 500,000 animals, and then now the guy's backing out of the story saying he never had boar, like versus how many pigs are in the uk versus a more common animal like a pig let's look this up look the british pig industry back in this is six years ago in 2014 around 4.9 million pigs were housed on pig farms in britain at one time including 349 sows and pigs and breeding sows right and there's 10,000 pig farms, just regular pig. So the just a regular pig is a lot more common than a wild boar. Especially, you look at this number. See, I'm not stupid. So we, you're going to have to make this make sense. It says the estimate is between 500 and 1,000 wild boars. So how many of them are uncastrated? Because he said he ate uncastrated wild boar meat. How does he even know that it was uncastrated? You know what I'm saying? Like... It, like like if it was he, the guy said it was butchered so it's like chopped into pieces he so it just got the the pig dick in the in the pieces like you know what i'm saying like it, it's looking crazy bro it's looking crazy so if there's only 500 to a thousand estimated of this animal then explain to me right explain to me how many of them are uncastrated that the number would have to go down because not every single animal is going to be castrated so that takes your your um, number of these animals. That makes it even more rare. Man, this look crazy. You can't got to look into it. If not, we going to continue to stay on top of this for the fans. And this is looking crazy, crazier by the day. And I understand that people are going to try to vouch for it and say, oh, no, he ate the wild boar. It was a weird excuse versus like, watch, there's a cyclist right wild boar nandrolone um test fail i'm trying to think of the the test fail cyclist okay so there's a cyclist alberto contador right who failed for this as well and he tested positive during the tour de france in 10, 000, 2010 excuse me for this same steroid and his defense was that he used wild boar, right? He ate wild boar, but he's also from a completely different region. He's Brazilian, if I'm not mistaken. Let's look it up. Alberto Contador. Okay, so where he's from Spain, Madrid, Spain, my bad. Okay, he's from Madrid, Spain. So in a whole different region than animals roam that like you, you don't find the same animals that they have in australia you know wallabies and, and dingoes you don't find that right here in america 
You know what I'm saying? So different. We know different regions have different animals. Like you don't really see kangaroos in California. You know, in wallabies and koalas. But in Australia, you do. So he's from Spain. So a wild boar might be a delicacy in Spain. Wild boar in Spain. Oh, wow. Look. So this is his excuse. It says the sus scorofa is the Spanish wild boar. So for a Spanish guy to be eating a Spanish wild boar probably makes a little bit more sense. Man, we get into the bottom of this. But for a British white guy where where the population is listed as, as being extinct and, and being an endangered species and only having 500 to 100 in his region, doesn't that sound a, a bit more sketch? Man, I'm catching that body. Look, it says the Spanish wild boar. So like I said, I rest my case. A Spanish wild boar, so a Spanish guy claiming that he, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But the cyclist Alberto Contador explaining, hey, man, I ate this wild boar. Don't you think it says for the Spanish wild boar shoulder height, blah, blah, blah. So maybe this animal. Look, the wild boar is ancestor of the domestic pig, except in wolf areas. It ha the wild boar has no natural, look, no natural predators in Spain. So there's nothing that is more vicious that's hunting wild boar. They got horns and shit like that. So you see the wild boar probably roams freely in that region. And it is clear expansion, the result of abandonment, blah, blah, blah. And they have game hunters who hunt this 600 to 1,000 animals per year. So as I said, I rest my case, young Johnny Cochran is on it. So different regions, there's the only natural predator is human. You know, they don't have no animals that's just out here attacking this Spanish wild boar. So the other bicyclist, I don't know if he cheated or not, but him getting off, that makes a little bit more sense because culturally, this is something that is more prevalent where he's from. Just like you go to Mexico, they might have certain things in certain dishes like lengua, where they eat a cow tongue. But other if you go to other if you go to Italy or something, that might not be a delicacy. You know, they might be in Paris eating escargot or or whatnot. So this alibi is looking suspect. You're you're plugged back out and it's rare and it's a rarity in the UK with an estimated 500 or 1000 wild boars and you say you just had a taste for wild boar but this spanish cyclist you you probably just copied him but his alibi actually makes more sense given his culture given where he's from you know just like canelo saying oh i went to mexico and ate the tainted meat a black dude couldn't just be like oh i went to compton and ate the meat because there's not no uh slew of cases of clenbuterol tainted meat from compton so it's looking less and less um realistic you can gotta look into this young johnny cochran i'm on the case more bad news for tyson fury and it's not looking good to me it's not looking we're doing our own private eye and frank warren rejected the claim he ain't said nothing he ain't said nothing nor was he there for that timepiece where he was failing a drug test more coming soon let me know what you guys think of this latest evidence from the number one search engine google Whew. this is a lot to process that's probably why tyson fury ain't said nothing and been advised to say nothing but we'll stay on top of it for you guys if you love what i'm doing smash the like button as always hate comment and subscribe till next video is ego signing off so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.